Okay, well I've put active steering to the test and I can confirm that it works well. Around town it's fuss free, light, sensitive, dead easy to use, but take the car out onto the autobahn at high speed, it becomes very, very direct and reassuringly meaty and weighty, which is exactly what you want. Now there's another technology worthy of mention, and that's iDrive, which is a multifunction information system. The 7 Series has an iDrive system, which is not very popular because many people who've used it have found it complicated. This one is second generation, and it's simplified, and it's dead easy even for an idiot like me to use. But you've got to ask, if this is a purist driver's car, which it is, why do they feel a need to give us loads of technologies that take away the driving experience from the driver? I mean, you wouldn't, for instance, give David Bailey a camera that has a fully automatic program, would you? Odd, isn't it? So what's it like to sit in the car? Well, the seats are certainly big and supportive, and you can specify the active seat option that massages you, would you believe, to keep backache at bay. And also, active seat ventilation, which keeps you from getting sweaty at the wheel. All quite wonderful, really. And in the rear, passengers get even more leg room and headroom than they had in the previous five, which, of course, was hardly cramped anyway. So how does the new five drive? Well, surprisingly similar to the old five, which of course is a very good thing, but there are differences. Most notable is the much sharper steering with far better communication than was ever the case with the predecessor. This of course is the active steering. The brakes are noticeably better than the predecessor because they are more progressive, more powerful, but easier to use, easier to feather in. The gear change is the same slightly gritty, long travel affair of the predecessor. And this three litre engine, while it's a fine engine, has a lot of power, it's very refined, and it's got a nice healthy growl under acceleration, is a little bit lacking in torque and flexibility. But you needn't worry about that because there are larger petrol engine choices due, and also the 530D, which has a fair bit more torque than this engine, is available from launch as well. But all in all, my first impression is that BMW have done a terrific job. This is a really superb drive. As you can hear, this engine's a lot happier in its upper reaches. Around town, it's a bit inflexible, but it's a real flyer on the motorway. When well, you can extend it up to um, 6,500 revs, and it's really keen to do that. Lovely chassis, very neat handling, and I'm really starting to enjoy myself. But all good things must come to an end. That's our report on the 5 Series done. Let's get back to the show.